Today, we're going to talk about a couple things. Number one, the single biggest destroyer of your immune system. And number two, what can you do to strengthen your immune system so strong that you can get through anything? Your immune system is immune to pathogens, viruses, bacteria, yeast, fungus, candida, things like that. But to do that, you have to understand a little bit about the immune system. But it's actually not a bad thing to get sick, okay? That's just your immune system responding to a pathogen. So many people, um, when they get sick, they get freaked out. They think, oh my gosh, my immune system is not working. No, it is working. It's fighting things off. The problem comes in when your immune system can't handle it, or the infection goes on too long, or you end up with all sorts of residual side effects from this infection. But the fact that your body is responding to something is a normal response. You want that. And um, this is how you develop an immune system over time. This is why they call it the acquired immune system, which is one part of the immune system. You have the immune system that you're born with called the innate immune system that your mother gave you. But then you have this other system that you have to develop over time by being exposed to certain pathogens. So let's first start with uh, comorbidities, right? Those are all the things that can uh, make you susceptible to having more problems if you get sick. The biggest thing that would be high blood pressure, believe it or not. Then you have heart disease, diabetes, which also includes problems like insulin resistance, obesity, COPD. Then you have HIV, which is a really big problem. You have immune deficiency. You have you don't have your full immune system there, um, unfortunately. So you also have like cancer and autoimmune disease, inflammatory conditions. You have liver problems, kidney problems. All of these things can lead to really poor outcomes if you get sick. Yet a lot of those conditions I just mentioned are connected to the consumption of sugar, carbohydrates. And this is why even consuming sugar has a huge dampening effect on your immune system. Now, the other thing I want to mention is um, your microbiome, your friendly bacteria in your gut and throughout your body. What type of influence are these microbes over your immune system? Well, it just so happens it's a huge influence over your immune system. Some people claim that it's up to 70 to 80% of your immune system. But it's hard to know that for sure. We do know that um, when you lose the microbiome, like after an antibiotic, boy, you are really susceptible to having all sorts of secondary infections and you have a definite lowered immune system. And so the microbiome is really vital in um, keeping your immune system strong and also helping you. And it's pretty interesting that it's not even part of your body. It's these other um, entities, these microbes, that are working for you. And especially when you get into autoimmune diseases, right? There's a huge correlation between gut issues and autoimmune issues. And an autoimmune issue is definitely immune related. So your own cells, your white blood cells work together with these microbes that are friendly and they both give you immune support. And the next thing I want to talk about is the three um, nutrients that are vital to keep your immune system strong. And you have zinc, okay, which is very important, involved in hundreds of different enzymatic reactions. But if you're low on zinc, your thymus, which is like your training camp for your white blood cells, starts to shrink and atrophy. So we desperately need enough zinc. Also, zinc is involved in the quantity of your white blood cells, as well as the weapons that your white blood cells create to kill off pathogens. And you can easily get zinc from uh, beef, um, salmon, and definitely seafood, oysters. But you become deficient in zinc when you eat like uh, foods with phytic acid, like the grains, for example. That would be the breads, the pasta, the cereal, crackers, etc. Now, vitamin C is another really important um, vitamin. And I would recommend taking it from a food-based form. You can get it from many different foods, but leafy greens, sauerkraut has tons of vitamin C. Vitamin C will decrease the duration of an infection. It helps to arm the white blood cells, the resources it needs. In fact, your white blood cells have like 100 times more vitamin C than your blood. So your defenses need this vitamin C for a lot of different functions to fight off pathogens. And you have a lowered resistance against pathogens. Also, there's this condition called phagocytosis where um, your immune system gobbles up and eats uh, pathogens, right? 
it needs vitamin C to do that job. So vitamin C is very, very important. But the most important nutrient out of all of them is the next one, which is vitamin D. Vitamin D is like the key thing that modulates an immune reaction. So if your immune system is overreacting, vitamin D will kind of put the fire out. Like in a cytokine storm where your immune system is out of control, vitamin D can put the fire out. In a vitamin D deficiency, you are very susceptible to getting sick. This is why people get more infections during the winter months because there's not enough sun out. And if you're deficient in vitamin D, your susceptibility to getting autoimmune diseases goes way up. So the sun will give you vitamin D, okay, cod liver oil, uh, salmon, but it's really hard to get vitamin D from your food. Now, there's something else I want to share, but I'm going to tell you this without telling you all of it, but you can read between the lines. There's a fairly recent uh, study that was published in June 5th, 2022, right? That's this year called Adverse Effects of Fill-in-the-Blank Vaccine and Measures to Prevent Them, okay? And I'm just going to tell you two lines from this paper, okay? You can read the rest down below. But this study showed that immune function among vaccinated individuals eight months after the administration of two doses of fill-in-the-blank vaccine was lower than among unvaccinated individuals. These findings were more pronounced in older individuals and individuals with pre-existing conditions. So vaccines can weaken your immune system as well. And let me just add one more line to that. According to the European Medicines Agency's recommendations, frequent fill-in-the-blank booster shots could adversely affect the immune system and may not be feasible. Now, normally I don't talk about that topic for various reasons, but I will say that... Um, this paper came out with some hardcore data and uh, you should check it out. All right, so now let's talk about the biggest thing that can destroy your immune system, okay? And the answer is a very certain type of stress called bereavement. Hands down, out of all the stresses someone can experience, a loss of a loved one is at the top of the list. Most of the study on this topic relates to what it does to your immune system. It basically shuts down the immune system. It also elevates cortisol, which causes a paralysis of your immune system. Literally, when cortisol is raised up, your immune system goes into shock mode. It just doesn't work anymore. In practice, um, nearly 100% of the people that I've talked to with autoimmune diseases and chronic immune problems always had some type of loss that occurred just before that event. But you have other stresses as well. You can have um, loss of a job, loss of money, bankruptcy. You can be in various stressful situations that can create a similar type effect on your cortisol. So if you're interested in trying to keep your immune system as strong as possible, you must do things to reduce your stress as much as possible. So let me just go through the list really quickly on what I would recommend. Number one, do whatever you can to handle your stress. If you had a major loss, then you have to literally spend a lot of time, you know, walking through parks, getting into nature, just getting your attention off um, that loss. Um, I've done extensive videos on what to do. You have to work on your adrenals. Ashwagandha is important. Vitamin B1 is vital and lots of it as well. Number two, sleep, right? The more sleep you get, the less stress you're going to have, the less cortisol you'll have. So sleep is very, very important. Then the next thing is uh, vitamin D, vitamin C, and zinc. As far as vitamin D, especially through the winter months, I would take as a maintenance dosage, 10,000 IUs of vitamin D3, okay? I would take at least 50 milligrams of zinc. I would also take vitamin C. I wouldn't take just the minimum. I would probably take two or 300 milligrams of vitamin C per day and make sure that it's a natural version. Now, if you're getting enough greens, then you don't need to necessarily add a lot of vitamin C. If you're getting uh, beef, if you're getting seafood, shellfish, you don't really need to add zinc. If you're getting enough sun outside, you don't necessarily have to add D. But during the winter months, it's difficult. All right. Number four, get on the ketogenic diet. Why? 
because just getting off sugar will greatly help your immune system and decrease the high blood pressure, the obesity, the visceral fat, the inflammation, the fatty liver, diabetes, the kidney problems, and other liver problems. And then the next thing is fasting. Fasting by itself can greatly strengthen your immune system. If you did a three-day fast, okay, you're literally on your way to creating a new immune system. So if you could do that occasionally, it would be the best thing for your immune system. All right, number six is getting exposure to sun, not just from vitamin D, but from another wavelength called infrared, which builds up your melatonin, which can greatly help your immune system as well as help your sleep. And number seven, eat foods that can build up your microbiome like sauerkraut, fermented vegetables, pickles, or take a probiotic, especially during the winter to help strengthen your immune system because those microbes are a big influence over your immune system. Now, if you haven't seen this video on getting rid of stress, uh, you should check it out. It's pretty awesome and very comprehensive. I put it up right here.